let's talk about lambda expressions and streams. All right, we found back in the world more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about lambda expressions as well as streams over here. And we'll start with the lambda expressions. So a lambda expression as a high level overview basically is nothing more than a method as a variable. Now, some of the more advanced people might cringe at this, but I think that this is the best way to explain it to a beginner. It is basically a few different ways of expressing a method as a variable. So, for example, if you had a method that would be something like this, let's say a public static void, hello world, right? And that would say system out print line, hello world. What you could do is you could call hello world, right? And what it would do is it would run this and it would run the system out print line right here and would say hello world. That's totally understandable. However, if I would have another method over here, right? For some reason, and I said public static void, and I'd say something cool, right? There is no way for me to pass in this method so that it gets executed inside of here. Or is there? Well, actually, there is a way, and that is with a runnable. You can see this is an interface right here, and the lambda expressions that we're taking a look at, they are, there are ways to express instances of single method interfaces. They're called functional interfaces. So, for example, I could make a runnable over here. I'm just going to call this runnable, and this is then equal to, and the the way that this works is that you have for a runnable, for example, you have no inputs. So you have you have empty parentheses, then this arrow right here, which is just a minus and then a closing angle bracket. In this case, that's the arrow. And this points to whatever has whatever should happen. So, for example, system, our print line, hello world, right? And all of a sudden you can see that is all fine. If I were now to use the runnable variable right here and call the run method on it, what you will find is that this also prints out hello world. Now, the cool thing about this is I can have a runnable as a variable over here as a parameter, and then I can say runnable.run, right? And then I could say something cool, passing in the runnable right here, and all of a sudden I have the possibility, more or less, of actually passing methods into other methods, which is absolutely amazing. But this is not all I can do, because instead of just using this runnable right here, I can also use this hello world, because when I start typing this, you can see it says main colon colon hello world, and it sort of converts the method right here into a runnable because a runnable in this case is something that it doesn't take any parameters and it doesn't return anything. But you can have things that return things, right? So you can have a something that is called a supplier over here. In this case, you can see a supplier this of something because it has to return something, right? So, it's, so a supplier of float, for example, could be equal to pi and that would then look like this. So three point something like this, right? So it supplies a number, right? So this is the return. The the supply right here is the same if I had a public static float method over here, you know, get pi, let's say for the sake of argument, and I'll return exactly this, right? So those two are basically, you know, more or less synonymous or very similar in that sense. You can have something else, which would be a consumer that basically doesn't return anything, but it takes something in. So it would have a parameter. So in theory, what you could do is you can make a consumer of a runnable here in this case, right? And that would be, let's say, test. And you could do this, and that could be a runnable over here, a runnable one over here, equal to runnable one dot run, right? And then all of a sudden, this consumer over here is pretty much the same thing as this something cool method. So you could then say test dot accept, right? Passing in a runnable, which would be our runnable, and then it would run again, which is like, it is absolutely crazy, but you can see we're just going absolutely crazy over here. The best thing that you can do, as always, is to play around with these different structures, right? These functional interfaces as they are, you know, they can get quite complicated if you get into it. But overall, they are pretty freaking cool. I'm telling you, they are really awesome to use and they are used in Minecraft modding a whole bunch. So we're going to be using the we're going to be using suppliers all the time because they not only allow you to, you know, sort of make methods available as parameters or as variables, they also allow you to have something that's more or less sort of like a, a deferred running of particular code, because sometimes what you want is you don't want you don't want specific code to have run yet. You only want to, you know, supply this code and you only want to give this piece of code and then only run it at the particular time. That is one thing where sometimes these, you know, suppliers and consumers and runnables are used in Minecraft modding, but you will basically see this. The most important thing is that you've seen, you know, the way they work, the way that it runs over here. And also what's important is that when you have this arrow right here, you can also always make an explicit, an explicit body for this. So what you can do is you can do something like this. And we, of course, need the semicolon over here. There you go. And now you can actually write multiple things inside of this 
into the body over here. So it works the same way as a method would. It works so much in the same way that I could actually do a runnable over here and I could say this is the method equal to main hello world. So I could just take this method and make it a variable. Pretty cool. Then somewhat related to this are streams. Now streams are a way of providing processing for lists and other things like collections. And we're just going to very, very like gently look at streams over here just so that you've seen those as well. There is a crazy amount of things that you can do, but let's say we have a list over here with strings, right? And that's going to be our fruits in this case. I'm going to say list.of, easy way to make a list over here. Let's say we have an apple. Let's say we have a banana. Let's say we have an orange. There you go. Let's also get a mango. Let's also get a pineapple. And let's lastly also, why not get a Mandarin? That is the fruit, not the language. And then what we can do is we can say fruits.stream and this will turn this into a stream of strings. And now we can call multiple different methods over here. You can see find any, find first, flat map, limit, map, multi-map, uh, map to long, max, non-match. So you can do a bunch of different things and you can see they take things like consumers predicates. A predicate, by the way, is something that takes something in. So it would be akin to a consumer. However, it returns a Boolean because a predicate is sort of like, okay, given this, is this true? So you, for, so you, for example, could filter, right? And you could say, well, I put in a fruit, right? So this is going to be a fruit. And then what is the returned? So what is the, what is the predicate like looking for? What's going to be returned is fruit dot, let's say, for example, starts with an M, right? So now we're filtering for only the fruit that start with M. And then we're going to say, well, for each of them, I actually want to print this out. So I can once again say fruit, and then I can say system out print line, and I can put this fruit in here and bam, all of a sudden I print this out. Now it says that it can actually be replaced with a method reference. So you can write it like this, or if I hover over this and replace it, we can even do it like this because it just knows that, okay, the only thing that I can put into this print line over here is each one of those strings over here and it's just going to print them out. So it should print out the mango and the mandarin over here. And of course, exactly that happens. This is the power of streams. They are pretty freaking cool. They can get quite complicated, but I'm telling you, it is an incredible tool that you can, you know, basically put into your arsenal to use. I... I basically, once again, suggest you play around with this. These are definitely two things, at least the lambda expressions. Those are definitely going to be very important. The streams, not so much. They can just be another tool that you could use in Java programming. But yeah, the lambda expressions, definitely take a look at those and play around with them a little bit. Just see what you can do, you know, pass in like some methods into like different methods and, and just play around with this a little bit. It is pretty cool. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons and members on YouTube for basically making this series and a lot of my other tutorials possible. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And if you also want to support the channel, take a look at the Patreon link, or you can also support by becoming a member on this channel. Thank you so much, everyone, for your continued support. Oh yeah, that is it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about records. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.